favorite pieces of gear, things that excite us, get us inspired to want to sit down and play our guitars. And that can be a guitar, an amplifier, or a pedal. And for me, one of my favorite pieces of gear is the Chase Bliss Mood. Genuinely, I think this is one of the most inspiring pieces of gear that any guitar player can have. So in today's video, I'm going to show you why I love the Mood so much. I should point out this video is not sponsored by Chase Bliss or anyone else. I purchased this pedal at full price from Chase Bliss when they announced it. But if you'd like to support the channel, check out links in the description to my video courses and please subscribe while you're down there. All right, let's take a look at the Mood Mark II. Hey, uh, Editor Rhett here. I just want to butt in real quick and say I've got a brand new video course dropping today. It's 
way different than my normal video courses. We're calling it the amp course. And essentially this is designed to bridge the gap between real analog guitar amps and the modeling world. It doesn't matter what type of amp or modeler that you play. We talk about the fundamentals of what goes into great sounds from a tube amp and how to transfer that knowledge into your modeler of choice, whatever that may be. We're running a special discount because this is the launch weekend. So check out the link in the description box for more information. And this is a great way to support the channel if you like what I do. Also uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, back to the video. If you're new to the mood, you don't understand it. It can be kind of confusing, but the best thing to do is break it down and think about it as two separate pedals because that's essentially what it is. Over here, you have the micro looper, which is basically its own pedal with its own set of controls. And then over here, we have what's called the wet channel, which is its own pedal with its own set of controls. Essentially what we have on this side is a reverb, a delay, and then what they call slip, which is this sort of pitch shifting kind of thing. But the reverb and delay on this pedal are so good on their own that I think it justifies having the pedal just for that. So we'll start with the reverb. We've got a time and a modify knob. Time controls the reverb decay and the modify controls the smear. So if I dial it in like this, I'm gonna get kind of a classic sort of plate reverb sound. <laughs> But then I can do like some room sounds, bring the decay time way down, bring the mix down a little bit. And then I can simulate like a spring tank. And then you can go full on just ethereal, washy, you know, calling the whales home underneath the ocean. Now the two knobs in the middle here are a mix knob, pretty self-explanatory, controls how much wet signal is coming out of the pedal. But this is the secret weapon of the mood, the Mark I and the Mark II. This is the clock control. It's sort of the resolution of the pedal, if you will. As I turn it up, you'll hear the pitch of the reverb go up, but you'll also get more fidelity. It'll be a higher quality sound. <laughs> But if I bring it down, now we get this like bit crushed kind of sound. I don't know any other reverb pedal that I've ever played or owned that'll do that kind of thing. And then if we start to push things to the extreme, bring the time down, bring the modify down, we get into some pretty weird territory. But if I bring the mix knob down to make it a little bit more subtle, Now next we have a delay sound, which is kind of the simplest part of the mood. But again, you can make things more interesting than your standard delay. But one of my favorite things to do is bring the delay time all the way down and bring the repeats all the way up with a relatively fast clock speed and you get this. Another way to get a really cool sort of spring sound. Sounds like a, a vintage spring reverb tank. Uh, and I can get it a little bit higher fidelity with the clock speed, but check this out. Again, I don't have a delay pedal that'll do anything quite like that. So now we're gonna move on to the micro looper section of the mood, which is what I really think makes this thing special. There's three settings on here. There's stretch, tape, and envelope, but I really only use the tape mode. So essentially what's happening is this side of the pedal is always recording. It's a looper, but it's a little bit different than your standard loop pedal. It's constantly listening. So whatever I play, it's recording. And as soon as I hit the foot switch, it'll start looping it back.
Playing guitar has been my job for the better part of 12 years, and I love it. I love what I do, but like any job, at times it can get a little bit sort of mundane and repetitive. But for me, this pedal helps me break out of that sort of rut mindset. The idea of playing the same types of licks or uh, songs or tones that I normally would. It sort of forces me to get out of my comfort zone and my, my creative box, if you will, and think differently. Because you don't typically know how this pedal is going to respond. That's kind of the brilliance of it. It's kind of always doing its own thing, and it goes so deep. I mean, I haven't even gotten into these dip switches on the back of the pedal and implementing things like LFOs and, and ramps and a lot of the other things that it's capable of. I'm just using it for a few basic effects and features. But just in that, I find a ton of inspiration and it gets me excited to sit down and play guitar and make music. And because of that, it genuinely is one of, if not my favorite pedals I've ever owned. And that goes for the Mark I as well. Everything that I love about this pedal, the Mark I does. So if you're looking for one, you can probably find a Mark I cheaper than the new Mark IIs, and I think they're just as good. They're just as inspiring. They're a ton of fun to play. It's a desert island pedal for me. Like if I could literally just take one pedal and a guitar and an amp to a desert island, it's gotta be the mood for me. Thank you to Chase Bliss for making such an amazing piece of gear. Uh, I'll have links in the description if you wanna learn more about it. Again, this is not sponsored. I'm not affiliated with Chase Bliss. Pick up a mood. I think you might dig it and uh, it might give you permission to sort of step out of your typical sounds, your comfort zone as a guitar player. Get out of the, the normal stuff that you're used to playing and hopefully make something new. My name is Retchel. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one.